My name is Rapsy, and welcome back to Slay the Spy I'm Modded. This series has taken a little bit of a break as to make room for the Hearthstone Puzzle Labs, but there's a finite amount of content in that, so it is time to continue the series. Uh, we've got Base Mod, The Mystic, Replay the Spire, Fetch Mod, and Always Well currently installed, and we are going to be playing The Mystic. Uh, now, the Mystic is a mysterious master of two opposed disciplines. Use sword and sorcery alike to defeat her foes. Starts with a spell book at the start of each combat. Add a random cantrip into your hand. Um, if anyone's familiar with basically like any tabletop RPG that has magic as an element, you're probably familiar with the terminology cantrip, which is like, no cost effectively. So they don't take your daily slots. They don't take... Uh, usually they don't take invocation elements, though they might. Not that I can remember of any, I guess. But we're going to be playing Mystic. <clears throat> oh, man. They actually are 3D. No, they look 3D. So it's a 3D model that would have been rendered and then cut up to make 2D, right? For the skeleton. Hello again. Uh, -hoo -hoo! Remove two cards is always nice. Uh, so here's our base deck. Uh, you can see four strikes, four defends. We've got also an arcane dodge and a shocking grasp. And you can see that they've actually got an additional element that di uh, differentiates them from other cards in that they're called different things. This is a spell. Note that these are skills. These are attacks. This is a spell. And this is an art. Right? This is considered an attack, right? You can see by the shape of the card, it's considered an attack. But it's also a spell. And this, you can see by the shape of the card, is a skill, but it's also considered an art. Now, arts and spells buff each other up. So this spell, for example, has technical. If you've played an art this turn, it will do its second effect rather than its first. Uh, this has arcane. So if you've played a spell this turn, it will get its special effect, which is an additional four block. It's really, really interesting. It's really, really, really cool. Adds a lot of uh, problems in terms of controlling your turn order, I guess. It introduces a lot of ordering considerations, I guess is what I was trying to say there. Uh, I'm probably going to go for two elites here. More question marks. Actually, you know what? Early removal. See, the thing is, I think, I think I'm going to really like uh, the Mystic class in particular. Because the early removal allows you to get your Shocking Grasp and Arcane Dodge closer to one another so that you can get that kind of technical and arcane synergies, or rather the technical and arcane synergies going. Um, so unless you flood your deck with like a bunch of spells and arts, you're much better served by removal. So you know I love a good removal. So this is a cantrip we've been given at the very start from the spell book. It is deal two damage, draw one card and gain one block but it's also considered to be a spell so it will activate arcane dodge and then that activates shocking grasp like that's so cool i like that a lot i really do like that it's uh this this is a kind of overinflated term that i like to use which is it's a unique axis of interaction like, ordering has always been a concern in these kinds of games, but not to this kind of an extent. Okay. Got your jawworm. I'll take... Ooh. Ooh. Th okay, there's been a huge art patch recently. Okay. Uh, cure light wounds. Gain two regen exhaust. Upgrades to three. And it's called cure moderate wounds rather than light at that point. Nice. Uh, we've got Stone Skin, gain three block, gain three block at the start of the next two turns, and three turns. So this is zero energy, it's a spell, and it's gained 12 block. Now sure, it's over the course of a bunch of different turns, right? And up front typically is more powerful than over time. But I can definitely see a place for it, being a low-cost spell. Magic Missile deal three times for deal three damage for each time the deck was shuffled this combat. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're going so thin. You have no clue. We are going so thin now. Uh, I love these. Okay, spell strike. Uh, deal eight damage. Search your draw pile for an attack spell and then play it. Now, it's worth noting this is an art 
and most spells have uh, have the technical effects, right? Consider this is a spell. So an attack spell. What's that like? Oh, this is an attack spell. This is an attack spell, right? And it has the technical effect, right? Shock and grasp. So playing spell strike will actually activate the following one, right? That's really cool. Uh, then we've got heavy strike. Uh, deal 12 damage and apply two vulnerable uh, for two energy, and it upgrades to 16 and three. So it's slightly better than uh, Bash, which is eight and two and then 10 and two, but it's also an art, right? So you can't directly compare elements from individual cards in this class to individual cards in other classes. And the primary reason is because the additional element of something being an art or a skill and the fact that that buffs other things in synergy with them makes them much more powerful than they may on their face appear to be. Um, natural 20, your next attack does this turn does double damage. Upgrades to your next attack this turn does double damage. No exhaust, that's interesting. Uh, diversification, sorry, diversification, diversion rather. Um, apply two vulnerable, and if you've already done the technical effect, so you've played an art, it is applied two weak as well. For zero, that's really powerful. Now, the problem is, how likely am I going to have an art already played that turn, right? I only have arcane dodge as my art. And if I take this card, then am I effectively conceding that I need more arts in my deck later? Which is going to make it more difficult to use the magic missile as my kind of like core source of things? Probably. So instead, I'm going to remove a strike. Now, medical kit, uh, the gritting jar is obtain a skill that draws two cards. Obtain an additional company for every other 12 cards added to your deck. The cards themselves say that you can't play any other gritting jar cards this turn until you upgrade them and then you can. Uh, and then the happy flower every three turns gain an energy. The medical kit being exhausting statuses. Uh, I'm just going through these because some of these, like especially grinning jar, it's possible that you're not familiar with it. Um, or specifically, that you're not familiar with what it does or what it allows me to do, which is take two cards from my deck and put them into my hand. Because a lot of people, every single time that one comes up, really want to know what it does. Ah, damn. Do I want to upgrade it or lose it? I kind of want to lose it. I got to be real with y'all. I kind of want to lose it. Yeah, I'm losing it. Okay. We're going to shuffle our deck so many times. It's going to be so good. Uh, okay. Ray of Frost. See, I don't know if this is going to be a good strategy. Oh, I can't tell you that for the life of me. What I can tell you is that it's going to be unique. Five on you. It's, if I played a spell this turn, I don't have any spells to play this turn. So, uh, kill you, defend. Look at this! Uh, it's so good, and it's actually, it, they stack on top of one another. That's really cool. Shield. Uh, so, this is a spell. Gain four block and gain four block next turn. Upgrades to six and six. But again, you can't compare this directly to. Uh, what's it called again? Um, it's not backflip, a uh, dodge and roll. Oh my gosh, it's a lot like dodge and roll. <laughs> uh, Tome of Smells, add two random cantrips to your hand, add three on the upgrade. Uh, eventually, we will see all of the different cantrips that exist from the spell book, so don't worry. Uh, Corrosive Touch, this is an interesting one. It's zero for six, right? So it's like a swift strike or something like that. But then you upgrade it, and it becomes a spell. That's really cool. That's another unique axis of interaction, right? It's it's the upgrade is specifically changing the core effect of the card in such a fashion to make it synergistic with the others. I mean, that's something that happens often, but not with the spell and art mechanic. Of course, the spell and art mechanic doesn't exist anywhere else. That makes sense. Eh, Mercury Hourglass at the start of your turn, deal three damage to all enemies, not bad. Acid Splash to deal three damage and draw a card. Unfortunately, I do have a lot of skills in this deck. Yeah, definitely not going to be playing one this early. Like, the Magic Missiles are going to be really good for me, but that doesn't mean they're going to, like, carry me hard. This would block me for six. Hmm. 
See, it has the capability to block us for much more, but it can only block me for six there. Okay, so I know I've got lethal next turn, right? Yeah, I definitely do. So that means I triple defend this turn. Mm -hmm. Cool. Funnel at the end of your turn. Unused energy is converted to four block each. That's not bad. Uh, deal four damage. Arcane, shuffle this card into your draw pile. What? So I guess... The only reason to have this is so that you have a single card that gives you a lot of art triggers so that you can start triggering technical effects. I don't like it. Uh, gain eight block for every art in your hand. Upgrades to be 10 and corrosive. Good lord. That could be ridiculously powerful depending on the art set. Let's upgrade the magic missile because it is our damage. Now doing five per shuffle. Spark, this is super interesting as a cantrip. Draw a card and then gain energy if it's a spell or an art. Now, I know that we have no spells or arts left in our deck. So I'm actually probably going to leave the spark in there. Actually, no, it's more important that we shuffle more quickly. Is that true? Yeah, it is. All right, so we'll play it. Strike again. Magic Mythal. All right. Get him. 15 damage, zero energy, not bad. Rapid Caster is actually super interesting. The first cantrip you play each turn is played twice. But the problem is there are exhaust cantrips and there's... Uh, uh, there are exhaust cantrips and there are cantrips that don't exhaust. Which means that if I put it in a deck that doesn't have any cantrip generation it can be pretty bad. It upgrades to be an eight. There's also spell combat over here. Arcane deals six damage X times. Technical gain five block X times. So it's like it's like a repeatable iron wave, basically. A repeatable unupgraded iron wave. And then a repeatable super upgraded iron wave, effectively. But the thing is, you need to... It has no effect if you haven't got a spell or an art played that turn. If you had a zero damage, a zero energy spell and a zero energy art both played, then spell combat becomes insane. That's really cool. Ah, this is really well designed. I'm loving this. Da 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 da. It's Latin gain energy on the first turn of each combat. Okay, I'm gonna rest now because we are going for another elite um, because I know it's not gonna be the worst elite. Uh. I'm going to take the 50%. Yeah, we managed to dodge it. Good. Okay. We managed to dodge the darts, but just barely. We open this. Gremlin food. Whenever you rest me, up, upgrade a random card. Shame we get that now. Uh, what is feet? Never seen feet before. Can only be played as the first card of a turn. Huh. Oh. All right. Uh, lightning bolt deal. Six damage to all enemies. Ten damage instead. It's nine and 14. Okay, so without the technical effect, it's slightly worse than a cleave. With the technical effect, it's slightly better than a cleave. It also counts as a spell. Uh, so... There's that. Bulk up. Gain six block, and then exhaust a random card in your hand. If you have the arcane effect, you can choose what to exhaust. So, again, like, there's, there's parallels that you can easily draw, like True Grit but they're not extremely apparent. Or rather, they are extremely apparent, but they're not extremely relevant. Uh, we're not going to be ta taking any of these. Next one has Power Slash. It's just a... Just like kind of like a building block art, effectively. Uh, Mighty Magic. Whenever you play an art during your turn, gain Dex until the end of the turn. Upgrades for Innate. And then Heavy Strike we've seen before. Now, unfortunately, these enemies actually kind of hard counter my deck. I'm going to Swift Potion to get my first shuffle already done. And then after the next turn where I've got four days in my deck, as long as I don't draw that many of them. Never mind, I drew two of them. Okay. So I was going to use Elixir, but 
We've already drawn two of them. Mm-hmm. Here's a fun thing. Because of the funnel, I can just end turn until we win. And the only thing that's going to stop me from doing that now is if I happen to draw Magic Missile because I want to cast that because it's cool as hell. Yeah. Got him. I know that I could be speeding this up by not just ending my turn every single turn, but I could also not do that. Ever think about that? Vajra! Start each combat with one strength. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Because of magic missiles. This is one more damage every single time. Uh, diversion, eh. Uh, I mean, diversion's really good, I believe. But again, we need to keep this deck quite thin. Sudden Clarity draws a card, so it, it's card neutral. Drawing two cards on the upgrade. Again, you have to remember, this isn't backflip. It's an art, so you can use it as a setup effect. It's especially worth noting that arts and spells that don't have technical and arcane effects are allowed to be lower priority because they're effectively the thing you play to amp up everything else's power. I think I will take the sudden clarity, and it's also going to be a priority upgrade now. Uh, double cast. This turn, your next spell is played twice? Deep Breath is actually insane for this deck, so yes, and then remove a card. Oh my gosh, this is so good! Because the D Deep Breath shuffles the deck. It has to count for uh, Magic Missiles. It has to. It only makes sense. Ah! Uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is Glee. This is this is this is what I believe Glee is supposed to feel like. Deep breath. Didn't get it back. Oh, fine. All right. Obscuring mist. I've seen the pure instinct before. Uh, gain 15 block. Technical gain an artifact. Exhaust. Gain two artifacts. Exhaust. Artifact gain is really strong. It's technical. I've got to keep reminding myself of this, so I need to have played an art, right? So this is an art, and that's an art. It's not that difficult for me to have played an art. Putting a high cost card in my deck, especially when I want to shuffle my deck a ridiculous amount, that's difficult though. Uh, we want Sudden Clarity and Deep Breath both upgraded. We will n most of the time play Sudden Clarity where we will always play Deep Breath, so we'll Upgrade Deep Breath. Probably using the Weakness Potion here. Read Magic. Yeah. Cantrip. It's an Exhaust one. Uh, draw two cards and then discard one card. Yeah. So we actually want a Sudden Clarity before that then. Draw two cards. And then Deep Breath. Yeah. Magic Missile. And then Sudden Clarity again. Strike. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. All right, so the weak potion is only going to weaken you to the tune of one. Well, six damage, that is, but still. Oh, this isn't buffed yet. Oh, I need to play the magic missiles for that to be buffed. Whoops. There we go. Okay. And then I can sudden clarity, and we're fully defended, and we're on, like, a fourth shuffle. This is so good. We haven't even got any burns in our deck yet. It's so powerful! <laughs> Alright. Now, if we can start finding a nice way to work vulnerability in here... And yes, I realize I've already passed up vulnerability a couple times with Diversion. But if we can find, like, a completely zero-cost way to include that, that would be great. Missile, deep breath, use sudden clarity, defense strike, and then as soon as we draw the magic missile, we win. Not only do we win, but we win flawlessly. Oh, yes. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Uh, discipline. 
Three power energy. Uh, okay, I knew there would be a card like this. Begin each turn as if you've already played one spell and one art. So that is to say all of your technical and your arcane effects are already triggered after you have played discipline. But discipline, I don't believe on that turn, at the very least with this wording, will give you a spell and an art, right? Because you begin a turn and it gives you the property of having played a spell and an art. Um, upgrades to be two costs, I have to imagine, yeah. Uh, momentum, spells and arts deal one more damage and gain one more block for each other, for each card of the other type played this turn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that makes things so much more complex. And it upgrades to be two costs. Cool. Uh, Gemini form, at the end of combat, gain gold equal to the total, uh, to the current total of spells and arts played this turn. Right. So this is actually, why is this a power? Because the, because the powers, the thing that the powers have in common is they are persistent effects, right? This is an effect that occurs once. I guess so that it exhausts and so you don't have the ability to duplicate it, possibly? Possibly, possibly. But so far I've only seen in this uh, character the ability to duplicate spells, not skills. So if this was a skill that exhausted, it would probably work as well. I don't know. Upgrades to be... Whoa. Gain gold and HP equal to the total, uh, the current total of spells and arts played this turn. That's interesting. So that's like a finisher, like you play it at the very end of a fight, but you play it at the very end of a fight that has another power that I've already seen as well, which is your spell and art counter does not reset until two turns after. Oh, pfft. I, I I can't take Velvet Choker, obviously. Uh, Ring of Chaos is... Yeah, fine. Uh, and Ori, choose and add five cards to the deck. We're not going to be doing that. So we'll take the Ring of Chaos. Some card rewards have randomly altered stats and effects. The problem is if it poorly alters the effect of a card that I was otherwise going to take. But, you know, it's... I have no way to back this up, but it, it, it should be, theoretically at least, equally as likely for it to make a card that I didn't want to take worthy of being taken. I shouldn't have done that yet. I should have waited until after the deep breath. That's my bad. Cool. So you can see a little counter showing how many spells and arts I played in the turn. It's actually really nice. Okay. Very much hoping that one of the top two cards of the deck there was going to be the magic missile. Sadly, it wasn't. Oh, well. Oh, I already have lethal. Cool. Uh, shield? Question mark? Repost. Ooh, this actually might be good. Deal four damage if the enemy intends to attack. Apply one weak and vulnerable. Upgrades two. And it's an art. Zero cost art as well. Snowball, so this is like a, a starter spell. It's the same thing as the other strike that we saw, right? Shield 12 block this turn and 12 block next turn. Is that worth anything to me? I don't think so. I don't think I take any of these. So, giving up Vajra is probably not happening. Giving up Gremlin Foods, possible. I mean, I'm not going to have that many cards left to upgrade soon. I need to upgrade Sudden Clarity, and then after that, I'd just be resting, probably. So you get, for trading this in, Naloth's Gift, which is uh, rare cards are three times more likely to appear. I don't think I want that, actually. We'll discover their rare cards later. It's fine. We're going to be playing a lot of this character. Uh, transform a card? Yeah, probably. I mean, we could transform the strike, and it becomes something really good. <laughs> momentum. Uh, spells and arts deal one damage more. Okay, so we're probably never playing momentum. So that, that was actually probably a bad idea on my part. Uh, getting Jax in this deck is probably not a great idea. We don't have a great way to heal back up. So it's, it's rough. Uh, Mutagens is a new relic that just gives you three strength on your first turn. It's pretty good. Here we go. Mutagenic strength. Start each combat with three strength. And it is lost at the end of your turn. You can see it's losing that strength debuff is a debuff. So it's, yeah, 
as possible to utilize that in some effective ways. Uh -huh. Yep, getting a lot of shuffles going on here. This is exactly the kind of thing I was preparing my deck to have the ability to do, by the way. Cool. This is why we have to go super thin. Vorpal Thrust. This is new. Uh, Heavy Strike has actually changed. It's more vulnerable and less weakness. Eh. Divining Blow is interesting. Uh, it's an art itself, but if I were already played a spell this turn, then I draw two cards off of it. Magic Missiles is a spell. It's my only spell, though. So if I draw Divining Blow and not Magic Missiles, it's actually pretty bad. Uh, Vorpal Thrust. Uh, deal 16 damage. Arcane, if you've played two spells this turn, deal 15 damage instead. So I, this is one of the instances where Ring of Chaos can't correctly account for, you know, making differences to a bunch of different cards. Uh, specifically, actually, there's a setting in Replay the Spire for how chaotic you want the effects to be. Um, and that's for, you know, basically allowing them to mess with different numbers that they otherwise might not have messed with. I believe magic numbers is the term that they use. And I, of course, have it set to the most chaotic it can possibly be. Because, of course, I do. Magic Methyl. I will. Deep. Magic Methyl. And then I'm gonna press digitation, sudden clarity. Uh, I kind of want to have momentum out like once, but I also don't want to pay for it right now because I would have had to use a block potion. I only shuffle the deck three times. That seems low. Missiles, some clarity, precipitation, arcane dodge, and then defend. All right, this is like the final easy to defend turn, because yeah, now that's 24. Deep breath. Not bad. Unfortunately, I am going to have to use this in order to perfect the fight. I'm okay with that, though. I am pretty interested in perfecting as many fights as possible here. Because if I manage to get a really high score with the character, I will get closer to unlocking their next level of unlocks. Tiny chest gain, 30 gold, you attempts them, likely to find treasure and question mark rooms, as well as a regen potion. That's another magic missile, but it's upgraded. 10. It costs an energy, but though. And the thing is, I play it multiple times in the same turn, so the difference between zero energy and one energy is not one energy right? Because I play it five times in a turn, so five energy. Like, it's it's so much more pronounced. Uh, whenever you play a spell in your turn, gain one strength until the end of the turn. So that's that's similar to another thing that we've actually seen already. Um, I'm probably going to go for the shop dedicated so that I can remove a card. I just want to fly. Uh, Impatience is actually going to be a really good card draw for us here. Yeah, because we have literally one attack in the deck. And then take a card removal. Get one of those defense out of there. Oh my god, if I upgrade Impatience and the other card draw card that I have in my deck, this can be insane. Uh, we have to Ray of Frost first, otherwise Deep Breath doesn't technically shuffle the deck. So we can Magic Missile, then Deep Breath. And Magic Missile, then Impatience, Ray of Frost, <laughs> Magic Missile again, Sudden Clarity, Deep Breath. <laughs> uh, magic Missile again, Sudden Clarity, Impatience, there's the Magic Missile, and a Ray of Frost to get us the Sudden Clarity, to get us the Deep Breath, to get us the Impatience, to get us the Magic Missile for the kill. This is really cool. I like this a lot. Uh... Magic weapon, gain two strength at a blade burst to your discard pile. Three and add a blade burst plus. I don't know what that is. 
Uh, grapple, target loses 20 strength this turn. Can't use in the same turn as an attack. So I have to imagine if I play an attack, I can't use this. If I use this, I can't play an attack. That's interesting. Um, that kind of limitation effect is scarcely found outside of the enemy hitting you with uh, uh, Entangle. Upgrades to become an art. Interesting. Blood Vial, at the start of each combat, heal for 2 HP. That would offset the cost of Jax, but yeah, we've already missed out on Jax. Also, I still don't think I would have taken it. Uh-huh. Yeah, deep breath there. Easy. So good. We need to remove like two more cards from this deck and it becomes completely unstoppable. Uh, Illusion of Calm. Gain seven block, become frail for three turns. All right, so this has been changed to make it garbage. Uh, bulk up, zero. The ability to exhaust a card is actually pretty good. And I would be able to make it arcane a lot of the time, right? Arcane is for a special spell, so yeah, playing magic missiles triggers it. That said, it would be effective the turn afterwards when I draw back to a full hand, because otherwise I'm running on full all time anyway. So it's not necessary. Uh, I want to go for another Elite just to increase my score, but otherwise I would probably duck on the inside, go to another rest. Impatience needs to be three draw. Then Sudden Clarity needs to be two. I'm probably going to go up here so that I can go to the Bonfire for a possible removal option as well. I was thinking at the time whether or not there was going to be a possibility that I would turn around and be ultimately quite saddened that I passed up what was it earlier? Uh, the uh, the vulnerability the bag of marbles and yeah there is it, that's, that's the case right now we managed to reach that moment I believe I am now in <clears throat> yep yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty infinite. So, I realize this might not be the best way to show a new character. Uh, I, I remember the response that it got after I did it multiple times with the servant. But, come on, it's so good though. And it's actually like much more difficult to achieve. And it's, it's not, like, based on broken cards. It's based on my thin deck strategy. Like, Impatience and Deep Breath are from the base games, and they're the ones that are making this work, right? Uh, become weak for eight turns. Okay, so that's... That actually seems really powerful. Yeah, it had a cost changed. Become weak for seven turns on the upgrade. All right. 25 damage, one energy is, like... A, a, there are a lot of things you usually consider for that. Obviously not for this deck, but a lot of things you usually consider for that. Um, yeah, I don't really care about the Venom Potion. <laughs> Snake Land is going to get a lot of malleability off here, I can tell you that much. Uh huh. It's that. Uh, diversion would speed all that up with the weakness, like, really quickly. Oh, well. Still not doing it. Space itself twists. We're going to go over the other side of the map. That's from Replay the Spire, just in case you're wondering, by the way. Uh-huh. All right. I'm going to draw using press the digitation and then deep breath. This is just to try and get as many shuffles as early as possible. Cool. Uh, 
Add a random art to your hand, it costs zero this turn. Style change. This is a skill as well. Upgrades to be zero. Eh, it's fine. Explore, encounter a random event. That's so interesting. All right, yeah, let's go. 99 gold. I mean, 99 gold's not bad. All right. Magic Missile. Deep Breath. Magic Missile. Ray of Frost. Uh, sudden Clarity. I do want to try and play Momentum if I get the opportunity here. Magic Missile. Ray of Frost. Deep Breath. Yeah. All right. This gives me the opportunity to actually play that out. <clears throat> I'll get you for that one. So I'm going to kill the Pondfish in this turn as well. Oh, it's going to be biblical. Uh-huh. And again. And again and again and again and again and again. Goodbye, Pondfish. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> this is Glee. This is what Glee feels like. I could actually probably kill Abe this turn as well. Hell yeah! <laughs> turn two. Perfect. Uh, Adrenaline Potion is actually really powerful, but I don't think it's necessary in this deck. All right, all right, all right. Uh, gain two energy, draw two cards, lose four decks this turn, exhaust feet. And it upgrades to be three. Interesting. So it's an aggressive dex uh, version of, uh, oh, what's its name again? It's an aggressive dex version of Adrenaline, right? Slightly better in terms of energy, slightly worse in terms of the feat as well as lose four dex this turn. So you can't put that many of these in your deck because feat means you can only play it as the first card of your turn. I, I don't think I'll be taking that. Uh, double cast your next spell is uh, played twice. Spell, I mean, I can double cast magic missiles, but I could also just not have this card in my deck and instead cycle faster and then the magic missiles just do everything forever. Um, to take Abe's treasure would be to include another card in my deck. To take Cursed Key would be to possibly include cards in my deck later. I can take the Busted Crown because I don't care about card choices. There's, what am I going to take at this point, right? There's a uh, two Elite Path that I guess I'm checking out right now. Yeah, there's no teleportation, so we'll go with that. Okay, a magic missile and then a deep breath. Very quick first shuffle there. Mm. Make sure to deep breath as early as possible. Easy. Yeah, this is going to be pretty uninteractive for my enemies for the rest of this uh, whole thing. I'm glad that while this came together, that it didn't come together, like, immediately. Because I could see that wearing thin quite quickly, let's say. Easy. Vorpal. Now we've seen that one before. Also seen it modified in that exact way before. Uh, okay. Wow, there's a lot of things here. Fireball, deal 14, technical deal. It's all enemies. This isn't even modified. That's, oh, that is, that's powerful. 20 damage AOE on two energy. That's pretty powerful. If you can secure the effect, this is good. Like, really powerful. If you can't secure the effect, this is still pretty okay. You wouldn't take it if you couldn't, but still. Each turn, draw one card, then discard two cards unless you have a spell or, uh, spell or an art. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess this is just, like, draw. I, I don't see any discard synergy in this class, so I guess it's just draw. It's very conditional. 
Uh, power attack, we've seen before. Grease, target enemy loses three strength this turn. Technical makes it all enemies instead and upgrades to five. Flourish costs one energy less per spell or art play this turn. Deal six damage twice, then double the spell and art count. Okay, uh, with my current deck, if I took this and I had the Gemini form that we saw at the end of the first floor, which is for your current spell and art count, gain golden HP at the end of the fight. Uh, if I could do that, or rather if I had that, then this would effectively make infinite money, given infinite HP on the enemies. Um... That said, I'm pretty clear that I'm going to be going with the hand drill. Whenever you break an enemy's block, apply two vulnerable, as well as removing another card. Because any enemy that now blocks is just permanently vulnerable now. I hate this. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not good. Like, I can take the Madnesses. But they're not necessary for the combo. And they're not extremely helpful either. Mm. One in four chance of that having worked. There's the Magic Missile and First Deep Breath. Now that that's zero, draw a card. It makes it much easier to play. There's a uh, momentum, at no cost. Cool. Now I actually need to start playing Arcane occasionally, so that I'm defended while I do this, mm -hmm. and then that yet again. Nope. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this could be a problem. Mm-hmm. That's how. We just got three burns in our deck. The enemy is now intangible. And all of our best cards were on the absolute bottom of our deck. It's pretty bad. Missile, activate the arcane, then deep breath, then arcane again. Arcane again. I'm actually kind of relying on that for my defense now as well. Perfect. That's the final arcane that I now need to play. And now I can just focus on trying to increment my magic missiles. I might still have an infinite here. Yeah, I do actually. Nice. Cool. This is an infinite that can actually carry other cards than itself as well, which is kind of exciting. So I can kill this turn. With relative ease, though. But I could also just kill next turn extraordinarily easily. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. And magic missiles to kill there. Beautiful. Unceasing top. If you have no cards in hand during your turn, draw a card. I mean, we're not be actually going to use that for our win. Uh, okay, so this is a... Exhaust Thor's game, uh, Thorns game, right? That's interesting. Four Thorns actually makes it a pretty significant amount on an uncommon card as well. So you could easily use like two of these and go pretty, pretty defensive. That's actually really cool. That's that's cool too. I like that. Uh, sure, I'll possibly... Oh my god. That was like the only one I would have taken. Uh, that Master of Strategy. It's insane. Mm -hmm. All right. 
right, shuffle and draw a card. Impatience. Magic missiles. Shuffle and draw two cards. Magic missiles. Shuffle and draw a card. Magic missiles. We're gonna kill the transient as well. Let's go. Shuffle, draw a card. Shuffle, draw two cards. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> ah. If we had some extraordinarily lightweight strength gain, that would kind of make this... Excuse me, that would kind of make this more bonkers. Uh, the Centennial Puzzle actually came after the Jax event because it came after Blood Bar and Blood Bar was after the Jax event. It would actually be perfect for this use. Uh huh. And again. Someone tells me this is going to take a while. Literally like two more times, including this one. Not bad. Okay, frozen egg. Whenever you add a power card to your deck, it is upgraded. Eh, it's fine. Definitely just going to be killing the mainliner here. Magic Missile. Deep Breath with the double draw first. Again. And... Yep. Fight's over now. It's pretty over. Disengage. Uh, not feeling that one. This one has a possibility of another removal, but I don't really need it. But it also is the time eater, so we are going to need to occasionally defend ourselves. It's kind of annoying. It's really hoping not to. Deep breath immediately. Deep Breath is effectively just a way for us to get momentum out of our hand. Mm -hmm. Some clarity first. Get all that. Draw again. Do all that. Draw again. Oh, it's so beautiful. Nope. Actually, I could have... Five extra decks in the final combat. And that's pretty good. That's going to be pretty good. If we perfect the final fight, we will have perfected all of the bosses. So we'll get a really high score. Usually I don't care about score, but it's actually relevant here. Damn it. I'm actually going to take damage in this combat. Unless... Unless... Hey, got him. Can we actually get, like, entirely back on top of the combo right now? Oh my gosh, we can. Oh, it's so resilient as well. I love it. <laughs> ah, I just thought I was going to be able to defend. Regal Pillow, heal an additional 15 HP when you have rest. That's an upgraded tome of spells. Way too late to add a bunch of cards to my deck despite the fact that most of them do draw cards as an effect of themselves. Okay. Most of my deck now costs zero. Now I just need to defend and kill. All right. Keen Edge, apply eight vulnerable to all enemies. What is this? What? 
<laughs> That's really good. It's really powerful. Uh, the time meter does block occasionally, so we'll be able to get the hand drill to apply all of our vulnerability, so we won't need to carry this around, but still. <laughs> good work, Ring of Chaos. That's the kind of thing I want Ring of Chaos to be doing, though, right? Like, random, insane BS. Each of these draws enough to offset the rest of the draws, so we're totally fine. All right, Curse and Concoction gain three strength and two dex. Add random curse to your draw and discard piles. I had, uh, I actually probably should have dropped the regen potion in order to take the speed potion, because then I would have had the elixir still here. But I need the speed potion and the ancient potion, so I would need the Curse and Concoction as well as the elixir. And we only have four slots, so that was never really going to work out that well. We only have three slots, rather. Brew two random potions. That's it's difficult to find something I want to take, but I mean, I guess if I get a speed potion, that'd be really handy. Money's not gonna matter, but actually, money could matter. The money I get from this could determine whether or not we get money maker. So we'll gain the ancient potion, then the speed potion to make sure that the effect of the speed potion is the one that gets negated. The effect of speed down gets negated, rather. Magic missile, and then draw. Magic missile. Definitely arcane here, right? The enemy is actually going to be... Wait, hang on. Yeah, we need to defend more because the enemy gets strength up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I really do want to play momentum one turn, but I think that's going to have to be like the last thing we ever do. So I'm going to defend, then deep breath. I had to defend first so that I had a discard pile, otherwise it doesn't shuffle. I'm gonna arcane dodge now. I'll do that again in another shuffle. Uh-oh. So if I attack, the enemy will get two strength. That two strength translates into... You know what? I'm actually fine to attack here. Because the funnel will heal... Uh, sorry, block enough that I'm fine. And then the enemy's not going to be attacking this turn. So if in 12 cards I can kill them here, which... Gosh, I hope I can. Because my whole deck is based around the ability to do that. I should be fine. Yeah, that'll just about do it. Hell yeah! My name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game. 1,291. I only care about our score so much right now for this character because your score helps you unlock things. Yeah, you, unfortunately, you can't go up two levels of unlock at the same time. I don't know why that's a thing, but you can't. So... We missed one perfect on an elite. We went for maximum elites every single floor. We got the beyond perfect. We got c c c c combo. We did get speedster a little bit faster. Like if I was playing this in my own time, I would, would have gotten another one there. Four bosses slain. I don't know why it keeps saying that. I didn't even get the event this time. I think it... I think it has to be the... Uh, the Abe somehow triggering the boss lane multiple times. Because I didn't even get the other event. Well, for the moment, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been End Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. Enter the Gungeon. Pfft. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. So play this in the description down below with all my content that's game past, present, and future, as well as a link to the 
uh, individual GitHub repositories for each of the mods that has been featured in this episode, as well as a video made by yours truly instructing you on how to install them. I might have to update that video soon because the... Uh, mod the Spire launcher has changed, not significantly since I made that video with the parts that pertain to that video, but it has changed and now has more features, like it can auto-update your mods. That's super cool. But yeah, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.